Welcome back to the barbershop people. Everyone please remember to maintain at least six feet of distance. Nobody getting cuts in here without gloves. And ain't no beards getting trimmed either. Nobody in this bitch without a mask. Man, it's been a little minute since I did a barbershop talk and uh, I apologize, but I'm not gonna force myself to come on here and talk about shit if I don't care. And for the last month since the NBA dropped, I, I really just haven't cared. There haven't been any topics that I actually cared to sit down and talk about until today. Well, yesterday, right before I got to streaming, there was, uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll see a lot of stuff that eventually becomes video topics, but I was on Twitter and and there was this post about teams that LeBron James was supposed to lose to and what we thought then versus what we think now. In other words, narrative wasteland, revisionist history, that type of thing. And it was a picture of four teams. It was, shit, can I, can I do this one off the dome? The 2017 Celtics, the 2013 and 14 Pacers, uh, the DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry Raptors, and the Hawks. Yeah, the probably the 2015 Hawks. And basically the gist of the post is like, oh, back then you guys, these are all the, these are all the teams that you guys wanted to say we're going to beat LeBron James and now everyone's acting like they never had a chance it was something along those lines maybe i'll post it if i can find it i'll post a screenshot anyways that kind of sparked the topic for me since we were supposed to be watching playoff lebron james yesterday what teams when he was in the eastern conference were actually supposed to beat him that's an interesting one because for the point that this poster was trying to prove i don't think they picked a really good list of teams i guess you just pick the ones that probably stick out the most of the ones that are most popular but i don't think this was the best list to get the point across anyways yeah it did spark that interest in me and going back to 2011 not 2011 but 2011 when he actually had other teammates other all-star teammates and talking about what teams when we were in the moment did we actually expect to beat him and where are we doing revisionist history now because the only team on his list that i ever put any shred of faith in were the 2014 pacers everybody else i don't think i even wasted my time watching the entire series so dating back to 2011 this is interesting because there were actually a couple of teams especially because the heat had just gotten together and they didn't have a great supporting cast there were a couple of teams that were looked at as a challenge and specifically in the second round they wound up going against the Boston Celtics. Of course, the old big three. Rondo's a bit better around this time, so you're really hearing more big four talk. That was one of the biggest mountains that LeBron had to climb, was finally overcoming that team after losing to them twice. And I'm gonna say I did expect the 2011 Celtics to beat the Miami Heat up until the point where everyone started getting injured. So coming into that season, absolutely. I thought they had retooled really well. They had gone out and got Delonte West, Jermaine O'Neal, Shaquille O'Neal, and they had thrown that on top of the team that was already there. So as support pieces, I thought that the Celtics were definitely deeper. Of course, we got to the playoffs and all three players I just named got injured. So by the time you were in game five, things were looking really thin and they had, uh, they traded Kendrick Perkins as well. So that, ch that changed things quite a bit. But coming into that playoff series, I definitely did think that they had a chance. That was not like watching them play the Sixers. And that series was also closer than people remember. Uh, Boston did lose in five, but a couple of shots could have definitely changed that series. It, it's not the five game series that it looks like. Then going on to play the Chicago Bulls. Uh, <laughs> it's funny because Charles Barkley is always like the most reactionary guy on TV. And I remember specifically specifically when the Bulls won game one. I remember Charles Barkley in a segment talking about how Miami didn't have the pieces and they weren't deep enough to get past this team and Miami ends up winning that one in five as well. Again, a, a couple of those games were really close and they were swing games, could have went either way. I'm gonna be real with you though, I don't remember what I thought about that series because I was so pissed after Boston got eliminated and thinking that their run was over, I don't think I even cared what happened to the Bulls in 2011. But I would say I would put that up there in the upper echelon of teams versus the teams that they faced in later years in the Eastern Conference or that he faced. They had MVP Rose, they had Boozer, they had Noah, they had a good squad around them, and they were the higher seed as well. And I'm pretty sure they had beaten them that year. They had they had their number, as the Bulls often did. So right off the bat, I think the Celtics and Bulls in 2011 are two teams that if someone were to tell you they had no chance of beating the Heat, that's probably revisionist history. I will also say that the Heat definitely were not a good playoff matchup for them, as they had LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. So you had two guys on the uh yeah, two perimeter defenders versus one perimeter superstar in Derrick Rose. Definitely didn't make life easy, especially towards the end. In 2012, I've always made the consistent stance that the only reason I thought the Boston Celtics were in that conference finals was because A, Derrick Rose got hurt, and B, Chris Bosh didn't play most of that series. You remember, he had an abdominal injury against the Pacers, I believe in game one. It was very early on, I think. I don't think that the Celtics were expected to beat the Miami Heat until they got up 3-2. I think that's when a lot of people took notice. People forget, though, that the Celtics had gone down 0-2 to start that series. They fought hard, but this was the Celtics on their very last leg. Ray Allen, I don't even think was starting by the time you had the playoffs uh Avery Bradley had taken a starting spot because Ray Allen had ankle issues not sure if it was like that for the whole playoffs Jeff Green had heart surgery that year so he was not in that series that's who they traded Kendrick Perkins for so yeah I, I really think it was a miracle that that Celtics team was there to begin with and being in that series but you only control what's there right and what was there was LeBron and Wade Sands Bosch and the Celtics on their last leg so the Celtics that year were not a team like the Sixers that had no chance of beating them obviously they got that close that was definitely one of LeBron's biggest challenges 
challenge is getting out of the Houston Conference. It was a team with championship DNA. 2013, the only team that even gave the Miami Heat anything of a scare were the Indiana Pacers that was a seven game series. And I still remember what this felt like. I still remember how the Pacers had seemingly come out of nowhere. The year before they took them six again without Chris Bosh. So I really didn't see that as being a real indicator of where they were. 2013 was the year that Paul George really took over the team. You really didn't see much of Danny Granger anymore. So I didn't know what to expect coming into that series. And you remember the Heat very nearly uh, dropped game one and they fought like hell. Now the Pacers again, uh, of course, especially that year, this is 2013 LeBron. This is uh, their best year together. This is Miami's best team and their best record together. The Pacers were not supposed to beat them at all. And I still think that that was much more of an upstart team. That was much more of a surprise team. Definitely one of the tougher ones that he would face. But again, if you're looking for a team that was supposed to beat LeBron, I well, at least personally, I was going for 2014. That's when I had expectations for the Pacers. That's when the NBA was doing commercials about Paul George and LeBron and challenging for the Eastern throne. I don't think that was 2013. But yes, that Pacers team before Roy Hibbert flamed out, that was a really good fight they put up. Ironically, the Indiana Pacers did worse in 2014. They lost in six games. But before we get there, let's have a conversation about the Brooklyn Nets. Because if you remember the 2014 season, this was the year that the Nets had actually swept Miami in the regular season. This was the year that Brooklyn tried to put together their own quote super team when they traded for Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett. They already had Darren Williams, Joe Johnson, and Brooke Lopez. So coming into the season, it looked like they had a really good starting five on paper. Of course, Brooke Lopez ended up breaking his foot, missed most of the season, pretty sure he did not play the playoffs. That team dealt with injuries off and on throughout the season. But still, remember that game, 2014, uh, it, it was the last time the Nets played the Miami Heat and LeBron thought he got fouled on that dunk and he was blocked by Mason Pumley, I believe. So coming into that series, I think there was a, a little shred of hope that the Nets might be able to challenge them. I do remember a couple of those games being closer, but Miami got that one done in five. I don't think there's anyone out there that said that Brooklyn team was supposed to beat the Heat. But yes, Indiana was the higher seed than Miami. They had home court advantage that year. They actually had expectations this time. They made a late season trade for Evan Turner, which I think ended up having an adverse effect on that roster. But in any case, yes, the 2014 Pacers would go down as one of the only teams where I actually sat down that early on with no injuries or anything to detract. That would go down as the first team, I think, in the LeBron Miami Heat era where I sat down attentively and really expected something to come out of it. 2015. Oh, wow. So this is LeBron James going back to Cleveland. This is the year with the 60 win Hawks, the, the infamous 2015 Hawks that had four all stars, A, because Kyle Korver got in as a replacement, and then B, people didn't believe in them because none of them were all NBA players. But yes, that 60 win Hawks team, the real team that people believed in that year, though, was the Bulls. This was Derrick Rose in his real comeback season. He had torn his meniscus uh, or had some type of knee injury shortly before the playoffs. He was able to return, and this is when the Chicago Bulls had signed Pau Gasol that offseason. And so I think this was the Bulls' best shot since 2011. As a matter of fact, it definitely was. That was a team I had put my faith in. I really thought they could, especially because coming into that series, there were some suspensions, right? I don't think J.R. Smith was playing. Uh, there was definitely some things going on early where I thought Chicago actually should have won that series. I actually looked at that as a blown series, to be honest with you. Now, of course, you do have the situation, the very infamous situation for Chicago fans where David Blatt tries to call a timeout. The ref didn't see it. And that's the game that LeBron James ends up hitting a game winner in. Had that not have happened, those sequences of events, Bulls go up 3-1. History probably looks a little bit different, but that did not happen. Gasol actually ended up getting injured in that series as well. So the Bulls lost 4-2, but again, very close series. And yes, I will full on admit, especially because of these suspensions early, and I think at least one other guy was injured. Oh yeah, that's right. Kyrie Irving actually ended up going out with an injury that game that LeBron James hit the game winner. Yeah, I definitely thought the Bulls could get somewhere. I was maybe even prepping for a Bulls and Warriors finals, D-Rose and Curry, because I truly just had no belief in the Atlanta Hawks. You can say what you want about 60 wins and all-star this and all-star bro. I watched like 75 to 80% of that game with the Cavaliers and Hawks, and then I turned it off. I, I left. I left the series. I was like, I started prepping for the NBA finals. I'm like, we'll see LeBron and the Warriors in a couple of weeks. I'm not doing this. <laughs> I think the only other game I watched in that series was the closeout game. Other than that, I had smelled Pretender on them the entire year. I did not see a star on there to go back at LeBron James. Damari Carroll did end up getting injured that series too, but fam, no. If there were believers in the Hawks that year, they were they were in Atlanta. Because see, back then, there were some teams that even if they had given off the, uh, the perception of power during a regular season, you knew no matter what situation LeBron James was in, he was probably going to end up beating them. That was the Hawks in 2015, and that was the Raptors in 2016. The Cavaliers again had no issue until the conference finals. That series somehow wound up tied, but I'm going to speak from personal belief here. DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry. You can go look at my receipts. I never once put my hope in this team. As a matter of fact, we're going to get to 
18 in a little bit and i'm going to talk about what my prediction was there despite the uh, situation that both rosters were in but i never looked at that team because i watched a lot of their playoff basketball and i never looked at that team and was like these are the guys that are going to beat lebron james ever 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 even when that series was tied i raised an eyebrow because i was like what the fuck is this series doing tied so then i sat down for game five and i was like all right let's see and I, i'm pretty sure game five got out of hand pretty quickly so in 2017 when toronto ended up playing cleveland in the second round this time you can probably guess where i stood as a matter of fact i remember a specific tidbit from that and i believe it was 2017 when demar Derozan said if we had lebron on our team we would have won oh my god i didn't believe in toronto before that but when that when he said that that was that that probably should have been the start of lebron so I, I don't think it started being called lebron so until the next year but that in spirit was the official start and Derozan was really good that year but nah no hope in them and then the 2017 conference finals happened my own team makes it back to the conference finals this is the celtics with isaiah thomas they fought like hell uh i, I maintained again I, i've never been uh i just don't cap when it comes to them the celtics that year in the first round i thought they were going to lose to the bulls and i thought the only reason they ended up really coming back was when rondo got hurt before that boston had dropped both their home games isaiah thomas was going through some things i actually didn't even feel great about that win but you know it's a win nonetheless you play who's in front of you i felt great about the win over the wizards however i thought that the wizards would have been the better matchup if you go back and look at my videos from 2017 i was actually thinking it was going to be the wizards in the conference finals playing the Cavs. i didn't think they were going to beat them but i thought they would have been the better matchup because i just never believed in isaiah thomas celtics and i didn't feel bad saying that i was looking at isaiah thomas's contract and wondering so what are they going to do are they gonna as he wanted uh as he said back up the brinks truck because i never thought he was going to be the guy to take us to an nba finals and so that's what i tweeted yesterday when that 2017 eastern conference finals start i damn near sunk in my chair with the with the bag over my head in like the first two minutes because i didn't believe in them coming into that series and it had nothing to do with being a real fan it was just reality as you saw y'all remember the scores the screenshots of the scores in this series we ain't got to talk about that bro boston did end up getting one without isaiah thomas though somehow ended up not getting swept go figure sometimes i really it really feels like teams play down to the competition but yes cleveland won that one in five very very predictable easy series there so yeah in 2017 there was not even a there was, definitely was no team expected to beat cleveland as well as i would say 2016 to be honest now 2018 lebron's last year in the conference things had fallen apart by then kyrie irving was traded to boston they brought together like they just slapped together a roster during the offseason with a lot of good looking names but that's really all it was they were notorious that year for having an extremely toxic locker room they ended up trading everybody mid-season and so the results of that trade you had players like jordan clarkson larry nance and they looked a little bit energized for a while but still there was just this thought like this team is not this isn't really a great team they looked more energetic than the product that they were putting out on the floor when it was like him and Dwayne Wade, but it didn't look like a frightening team at all. So going into that year's Eastern Conference playoffs, that's where I actually expected Philadelphia to go to the finals. Philadelphia was a young upstart. They had Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, and Boston ended up losing Kyrie Irving. So having lost Kyrie, not gonna lie, I did not expect Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown to really take off the way that they did. They already didn't have Gordon Hayward, so I didn't think that team was gonna make it far that way. They really rose to the occasion. But yes, even go, go go back and look at my eastern conference uh prediction video that year i chose philly philly did not even end up beating boston they lost 4-1 so cleveland ended up going seven with the pacers when indiana was still a surprise was indiana expected to win that series i don't think so that was watching that series to me felt like whoa look at this young indiana team look how this trade worked out for them with oladipo this is really cool i think that was more of like a, it could have gone either way thing though because again cleveland's roster was not that great by then lebron james had to put up some monstrous performances i still remember at the end of game seven i did not agree with some coaching decisions so that was one of those where th as that series wore on you really thought that it could have gone either way cleveland and the raptors now i done told y'all 2016 2017 especially never believed in them started believing in them less go back and look at my playoff predictions despite thinking that toronto that year actually had their best chance i believe i chose cleveland winning that series in seven that's all i gave them because i had so little respect for that raptors roster even with the state of the cleveland roster i said nah i still these guys still aren't for real they're gonna go out in seven they went out in four now very little talked about fact the cavaliers actually did provide great support that series their shooters were clicking but still yes it was absolutely lebron so. and the fact that the raptors couldn't even get a game that's where even though lebron james left the conference they still went ahead and said now nah, we're, we're going a different direction this ain't it what we got right here this ain't it so cleveland ends up sweeping them that is not a team i believed in but i thought the cavaliers were still going to take seven by nature of the roster just not being that great that one impressed me that series win the way they one impressed me and then there was the boston celtics that was a really really weird time the eastern conference finals no kyrie no gordon hayward but a very sparse looking lebron roster
roster. Again, I thought that was one of those series that could go either way because I didn't even expect Boston to be there at that point. And I just remember thinking like, what is this going to look like? How is this going to work if the Celtics end up going to the finals and they play the Warriors? This is Kevin Durant Warriors. Like, we don't have our stars. I really didn't, I don't know, something about that just didn't feel right. Even if they played Houston, I just, I didn't know where my head was really with Boston that year. But nonetheless, amazing series. I remember watching that on a small TV in Costa Rica. Well, it, it was a nice hotel, but yeah, I remember the Jason Tatum dunk on LeBron and everything. Series went down to the wire. That was still an impressive win for LeBron because it was one that could go either way. Don't think that you would go as far as to say Boston was supposed to win that series. If they had had Kyrie and Hayward, oh, absolutely. I would have picked them then. I would have definitely picked them. As a matter of fact, they would have probably been my pick to have come out the East if they had those two. But at that point, I think it was more like the Pacers series where it could have gone either way. So that about wraps it up. As you related to the Twitter post, talk about revisionist history and looking back, I can really only think of a few teams where I said this team is supposed to knock LeBron James out of the Eastern playoffs this year. But of course, that's me personally. I would definitely like to know what teams did you expect to knock LeBron out of the East? Remember, not finals eastern conference i think there were a lot more swing series where it, like the celtics or the pacers it could have just gone either way i think there are very few where it's just like you sit down and it's like this is the, this is the time that lebron is going to lose in the east i think there's very few of those i do think also that you know the take might be inflated by people who really wanted lebron to lose back then so if someone was putting their hope in toronto it might not have necessarily been that they thought that they could beat them as much as they just wanted to see somebody you know see something new see somebody else go see lebron's teams break up those type of things but yeah anyway Anyways, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, comment, and sub if you enjoyed, and hit the bell next to my name if you want notifications every time a video drops. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.